Good afternoon. Hello. Um, for anybody who does not know me, uh, my name is Miss Krang. I am the head of year seven. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to having you. It feels like the summer is here. We're very close to finishing up primary school um, and beginning um, for secondary school. It finally feels quite tangible. So the focus of um, today's session is kind of split into a little bit. The first part of the session, we are going to look at making that change, how we move from primary school to secondary school. And then the second part of it is going to be looking at this idea of feeling lost. We're lost, but we're not actually lost. We've just got to be able to find our way in this process. Now, on the um, screen I've just put at the bottom, you will need a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, please, to be able to participate in the activities of this. There is also a Q&A box um, at the very top right hand of your screen that if you click on there, you can ask me any questions as we go along. When I give you the various tasks to do, it would be really, really lovely to have your responses either in the Q&A box um, or just giving me your thoughts and feelings because at the moment I am just talking to a screen. So let's get going then. Let's get going. So we're going to start off with making the change. As I said, making that change from primary to secondary school can feel quite ominous and quite nerve wracking um, for lots and lots of different people. So how do we make this better? Well, first, what we need to do is we need to acknowledge what change is and why change happens. We go through loads of different changes in life. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. For example, we might have moving house, becoming a vegetarian, becoming a brother or a sister to somebody, getting your first job, which is years away for some of, for, for you, but it is still a big change that we know we look forward to breaking your leg or your arm, not necessarily a good change, but lots of people go through that as a change. How do we cope with suddenly not being able to use one of our limbs? Growing up, just generally, suddenly feeling like you are much older than you were before, that can sometimes unsettle us. But one of the biggest changes that all students tend to find and is commonly kind of considered is that change from going from primary school to secondary school. It's one of the biggest changes you are going to make, regardless of which secondary school you end up going to. It is moving from a very small primary school where you will generally have maybe one, two, three teachers at most. You spend a lot of your time in either the same classroom or the same couple of classrooms and you generally know everybody in the school. The teachers know you, they've known you from a really, really young age and actually they have been a huge part of your life to get you to this point. And we are forever grateful for primary schools and everything that they do to be able to help you get ready for secondary school. What I want you to start to see is change is an opportunity. Some of you might be sat there thinking, oh my gosh, the change of this, I'm really nervous about it, it's really unsettled. Actually, I want to stay where I am. Moving to secondary school is a huge opportunity for everybody and it allows you to become a new version of you, to grow more than you were before. You might have find that actually you've kind of got a bit too big for primary school. You know all there is to know and you're looking forward to that change, to this change of teachers, change of um, area, change of location, all of that. OK, so how can you face change and be prepared? Lots of easy things that you can do are things like this. You could talk to friends and to family about your concerns and excitement. You can be organised, get all of your equipment, everything that you will need ready for that first day, ready and in a bag so that you know it is ready to go. You can learn the new layout of your new school, of our school, know the timetable of our school, know what uniform and sports kit you need and never be afraid to ask for help. I have an email address that is called Wangel's Transition. You can either email me directly to that email address or you could ask your parent or guardian to do that for you. Talking to people gets those worries out on the table. The biggest thing here is embracing that change. See it as an opportunity. For lots of you, the excitement of making new friends and meeting new people is going to be a really big one, particularly if there are some of you who are coming from the only person in their primary school. It might be a little bit daunting, but it's also really exciting getting to make 
friends for life, potentially. Some of my closest friends are friends that I met when I was 11 years old in when I started secondary school. And we've seen each other grow over the last two decades now, roughly two decades to be able to grow up together. You're also going to be able to try out new clubs and activities. Everybody's facing the same worries that you are, so please don't feel like you are the only person feeling that way. You might find that friends in your primary school just aren't voicing it, but they're probably feeling that element of nerve that they're just not saying out loud. The biggest thing for us is we'd love for you to make a great first impression with your behaviour, with your organisation and with your general presentation. We are wanting to give you the opportunity to reinvent yourself if you need to or if you want to. Potentially you were a little bit more nervous at primary school and you want to use this opportunity to be confident and outgoing and be that new personality. That's there for you to do at secondary school. Now, one of um, my favourite people um, is a somebody who you've probably heard of called Malala and she is somebody who is the biggest advocate for education and this is what she says. One child, one teacher, one book, one pen can change the world. One child, one teacher, one book, one pen can change the world. Secondary school and secondary education has the opportunity to develop you as a person. Now, she actually goes on to believe that anybody, it doesn't matter who you are, what your background is, whether you think you're clever or whether you don't think you're clever, you can get to where you want to be in life using education. So quite literally, you, me, that person on the bus who goes down the secondary school, down the road, can change the world. The power of education to help you do that is massive. It opens up all of these doors that you thought might have been locked. It gives us the bricks to build the highest tower from which we can see the beauty of the world. Or to put it without using metaphors, a good education can help you get the life you want for yourself. You might be sat there going, I know exactly what I want to be when I grow up. I know what job I want. It can help you get there. But equally, if you don't know what it is, which is totally fine at this point in time, you can still use the education to open up doors for you. Working hard, trying your best opens doors. It will never close doors for you. OK, so the first thing I want us to do is a little bit of a task and I'm going to give you five minutes to do it. So it's just about 10 past four now. Before we make any kind of significant change, I want you to look back at what you what you're saying goodbye to. OK, as well as what it is that we're looking forward to. So I want you to think about how far you've come. OK, I want you to name three things that have changed the most since you started primary school. Three things that have changed the most for you. What are you going to miss about primary? What are you most concerned about in your new school? You can write this on a piece of paper with a pen or you can put it into the Q&A for me so that I can have a read of it as well so that you don't feel nervous. Nobody else will be able to see what you've written in that Q&A. It is just me. So it's 10 past. I'm going to give you five minutes to do that. Five minutes. Please remember that you can put things into the Q&A box. You can also ask me a question about the task if you need any help.
Oh, lovely. I'm starting to get some responses in now. Please, it's really lovely to be able to hear what it is that you're thinking. The changes from primary school, what, what's changed the most since you started primary? What are you going to miss? What are you worried about? Lovely, so we've got quite a few answers coming in, which is super. Um, people saying that actually some of the biggest things that have changed whilst we've been at primary school is our age. You've grown up. You started at four, four years old you were at primary school and now you are 11, or maybe nearly 11. Your height has changed. You've gone from being really, really little to really, really tall. Things coming in that we're going to miss. Friends that might be going to different schools, lovely. That's a very legitimate thing to feel, friends going elsewhere when actually you feel like you've been such good friends with them for so long. Missing your teacher. The teacher that you might have had for a whole year, for two years, who's really looked after you. Oh, that's a nice one. Someone's put, they, they, they miss spending time with possibly the younger years helping out. I know that lots of primary schools have got um, maybe prefects or year six helpers who will go and help with reception students and help them out. Yes, the TAs. Other things that have changed, they've grown up, got more friends, become more confident. Now let's look at the things we're worried about a little bit. We're worried about there being so many more people, older students, and feeling worried about how they might interact with you. What they might say or do. I think the biggest piece of advice that I hope you take is that any concerns that you've got about old students, you needn't be worried about. Um, most of our year groups tend to stay, stay within their year groups pretty much. And particularly at the very, very start, Lots of our older students are always so keen to come and help out with transition and to help with the year sevens and showing them where to go and what it is that they need to do. So we've got lots of lovely students who are willing to help. Another worry is getting lost in a big school. Correct. I will talk to you about that in a little bit longer. Getting lost. That's probably one of our biggest worries, I think. So if we think about it in this then, throughout our lives, we go through all of these different changes. We call them transitions. Hence why my job is the transition leader from primary to secondary school. <laughs> some of the changes. Now, you might sit there and go, actually, some of these don't apply to my, my primary school. And that's OK. These are generalisations. But in primary, generally, it's a smaller school, same class all the way through school a smaller range of subjects, same teacher or few teachers for the entire year, if not more than one year, playtime activities to do. My understanding is that at primary school, you get given lots of different things that you can do at playtime. It could be close to your home. You might be able to only walk a couple of roads to be able to get to your primary school and we might be much further away. Less independence, lots of people there to help you and do things with you. But when you move to secondary school, Lots of that changes. It's much bigger. We know that we've said that we're worried about being lost in a school. Moving to different lessons tends to be something that lots of people worry about. And I will give you a couple of ways in which we're helping you out with this as I go through. Different subjects, types of homework, structure, routine. You might find that you've got to get up earlier than you did at primary school. Our school day starts at 8.40. You will have a form tutor and class, different groups of people more independent learning this is the biggest thing that people tend to find is their shock from primary school to secondary school it's much more independent we ask you to take responsibility for what you're doing and making sure that you can do it the biggest thing you can do there then is to be able to ask for help if you're struggling a mixture of different children from different schools it's the most exciting thing i believe it's being able to meet new people from all over the area and different sets of rules. We probably do things differently to your primary school. So another activity, just five more minutes down. I want you to now write in the chat for me because it was lovely to read them. Write down three things that actually you're really excited about with secondary school. Three things you're really excited about and three things 
that you are still worried about, that you want to ask a question and I can answer it for you. What three things you're excited about, three things that you're worried about. Five minutes, write them into the chat for me. It'd be lovely to see them. Oh, lots of questions and things coming in. Oh my gosh, so many people have said food. They're excited about the food from in secondary school. I can tell you it is good food. It is very good food. Sports, lovely. I've just been outside with our year seven um, boys football teams. We had three going this afternoon. There was a girls um, rounders team that was running as well. They were having a lovely time out in the sun. excited about meeting new people, using your thumb to buy food, lots of new lessons, your friends coming with you, the gym, the gym is awesome, loads of different things in the gym. Any other positives and then I will look at the worries and I'll help answer them. OK, so some of the things that people are worried about, worried about detentions. Well, we do have detentions, but you would you have to do quite a bit to get a detention. And I don't think there's something that you need to worry about. You're not going to get a detention on the first day for being late. You're not going to get a detention for not knowing where you're going or anything like that that goes wrong. You have to do quite a bit to get a detention. So please don't worry about detentions. And if you are worried, then the best piece of advice I can do is be the best that you can be. Someone's, I'm not sure if it's worried or excited about the new teachers. Yes, it can be a little bit worrying because you're going to go up to about 14 teachers, maybe. Maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, but that's a lot of new names to learn and people to get to know. But it's also quite exciting. Lots of different teachers. We are all subject specialists. So for those of you that don't know, my subject specialism is drama. This is my drama studio. So I, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to drama. And actually, that's a very exciting thing to have. Teachers who know exactly what they're talking about in their specific subjects. They know it at a finer, finer detail. Lessons being hard. Well, the work is going to be harder than primary school. If it wasn't any harder, you wouldn't be learning. And the importance is to make sure that you learn. But we are all here to help you and make sure that you are finding it manageable as opposed to overwhelming. Keeping on time to lessons. Most of your lessons, you're going to be with the same people. So you will all kind of leave one lesson and go to the next lesson together. Lovely. OK, a couple of top tips for you. So when you start in terms of making the change, some things that you can do to help yourself. So when you go in for your first day, ask people their names. I've said this a lot to many of the different students that I've gone to um, primary schools to meet. Ask people's names, get to know people. It's a really good opportunity in those first few days to introduce yourself. Be confident, be excited about, about it. The other biggest thing is being kind. Everybody is nervous and sometimes we display this in different ways. Sometimes when people are nervous, they can become louder and they just keep talking and talking and talking because they're nervous and they're trying to cover it up. Other people can go very, very quiet 
and needs to kind of sit away from people. Be kind, particularly if you are somebody who is coming from a school where lots of people are coming. There's going to be lots of people who don't know anybody and it's it would be really lovely and kind of you to be able to go and ask them and say, are you OK? My name is come and sit with us, come and join us. We'd love to get to know you. Make yourself talk to new people. It is scary. Talking to new people is scary, but getting that conversation going asking people about their family, about what they, um, where they've been over the summer, what they've done, whether they've got any pets, getting to know people. Ask if you're not sure. I can promise you I will have heard all of the possible silly questions a hundred times. Please just ask if you're worried, if you're not sure, if you want to just double check something, ask. We are all here to help. This is another good one. Be determined to make a good impression. Good impressions are important and it's what I kind of remember because I won't necessarily see every single person every single day, but those impressions are what counts. Be polite and have the right equipment. Smile. I'm a very, very smiley person and I promise you I will smile at you as many times as I possibly can at the very start of September. Even your teacher might be a little bit nervous about coming back. They'll have had six weeks where they have been preparing curriculums, doing other different things, smile, be polite. OK, so that is the idea of making the change. What I'm going to talk to you about now is the idea of lost but not lost. I'm just going to check the chat to see if there are any other questions that have come through. Oh, lovely. Somebody said they're excited to see me. Well, I'm excited to see you too. It'll be really lovely to put the faces to the names and get to know you properly. So somebody's just asked if I can show the timetable. Now, when I visited primary schools, I showed the timetables to some students. However, we have got on our school website. Um, I'm going to drag this over to you now so you should be able to see and I will direct you to where you can see an example timetable. So if you go to join us year six to year seven transition, and then if I go down to starting in year seven question and answers. It will load up nice and slowly. There's lots of different questions and answers that you can have a look at here. But at the very bottom. Whoop, keep going. There will be a timetable here for you to have a look at. So this is an example of a timetable that you can go and have a look at and see to make sure you kind of familiarise yourself. OK. Wonderful, right. I will put this link into the chat and then. then you can go back and have a look at it at another time if you'd like to. There we go. OK, so let's talk about lost but not lost. That movement from primary to secondary can make you feel a little on the lost side, like you don't really know where to go. You don't know who to turn to. You don't know what it is you can do to make yourself feel better. So we're going to cover that bit for the last 15 minutes. Most of you will have felt lost at some point. I know that I have felt lost at some point where I just feel like I don't quite fit in because I don't know what I'm doing yet. It might be when you're moving schools. Some of you that have already moved schools more than once will know this feeling. Moving home, going to a new club, playing a new sport, trying a new skill or task, solving a problem. All of these things can make us feel unsure, like we don't know what it is that we've got to do. And that is a completely new, understandable feeling. And everybody in the world will have felt that at some point in their life. What we want to do is make sure that we can manage it. OK, it's OK to have those fears. OK, the big thing I can give you here is you can feel a little bit lost, but you're not alone. You will be bored of my face by the time you get to the end of year seven because you will have seen it so many times and I'm here to help. Things that you don't need to worry about and why. On the first day in year seven, you are going to have a big treasure hunt around the school to find out where everything is. So those of you that are worried about knowing where you need to go, I've got that covered. We will learn where it is through a big treasure hunt. On that very first day, only year seven and 12 are in school and you won't see the year 12s for very much of it at all. So you've got the whole place to be able to go around and have a look. 
Your tutor on that first day will talk you through your timetable and they'll show you where to go. Everybody else in that room is feeling the same way, particularly in September when you've had a summer of not being in contact with us, you will feel those nerves. Your classes are going to be with the majority of the same people, so you'll be able to help each, out, each other out going to and from lesson. You can ask someone bigger. You can ask one of the old students and they will definitely take you up on the opportunity to walk you to a lesson to show you where it is you need to go. You can. Um, we also have older students who can help you who are called our mentors. We have anti bullying mentors. We have um, older mentors who are able to help with how you're feeling and processing different things. But the biggest thing is our school is full of staff who want to help you. You just have to ask. You can ask any questions to any teacher at any time and they will be there to help you. Now, sometimes recognising that idea of feeling lost can be a little bit um, difficult to read. And I have lots and lots of students at the start who are feeling nervous and what it comes across in is different ways. It's not just feeling nervous, it comes across in different things. So it might come across in terms of feeling a bit numb or missing what you know. So feeling like you're missing primary school because you knew who knew how that worked. Not being interested in your hobbies anymore, not wanting to do things, struggling to concentrate, really wishing that things were the same as they were before, lacking motivation to do things, feeling helpless and feeling hopeless. All of these feelings are a sign of feeling a little bit lost. OK, that's emotional loss. We can we can help you with that and detect the fact that you're feeling like you're struggling through those things. Equally, if you're feeling worried, it can come out in more physical things as well. It can make you feel sick. You can start to feel quite nervous and feel sick. And we have some students who will say, to them, oh, I don't feel very well. And actually what it is, is it's nervousness. It's nerves about something. Feeling tense and therefore snappy at other people. Having a headache, feeling tired or no energy. Struggling to sleep, feeling anxious and not feeling hungry are all physical things that you might feel if you're worried about something. Okay recognizing them and going all right it's not that i'm feeling ill it's my body's way of showing that i'm worried the biggest thing we all have this we all have this and everybody has this at different points in time i have had moments where i feel, felt worried it's come out in lack of sleep or it's come out in not feeling very hungry and not eating but these things, this moving from primary school and feeling in that way, it is normal. It's normal when you move from primary to secondary school and it will pass. These things do pass. It might take a few days, it might take a few weeks, but it does pass and things do start to feel a little bit better. What you need to show is our resilience, which is one of our school values, is the resilience to keep pushing through and to make sure that you are going to keep trying regardless of how you're feeling. So an activity for you now then for me. I want you to use the growth mindset brains that you might have joined in with with my session about a month ago. And I want you to change all of these statements into positives, positive things. Sometimes our brain tells you the negative things, but it's not based on fact. It's the worry that's coming through. It's your job to tell your brain that there's another way of thinking. OK, and that sometimes it's wrong and it's OK for your brain to be wrong. So I want you to change these statements for me. I won't ever fit in. I will always be lost. I can't do these subjects. I won't make friends like I had in year six. I miss primary and then one of your own. I'm going to give you five minutes to do that for me. Five minutes. Change these into different sentences. For example, this isn't true. I will find people who like me. I just need to find them.
Yay, I'm getting some answers coming through now. Lovely. Oh, these are so lovely to read. These are lovely. Oh, well done. Really good. I will sometimes be lost, but I will soon find my way around. I find the subject hard, but I will keep trying. I don't have any friends yet, but I will make some soon. I miss my primary school. I have great memories of my primary school. That's a lovely one. We might miss things, but we've got all the lovely memories to treasure moving forward. That's a nice one. Although I miss my primary school, I do and will like my secondary school. Even if I'm lost, I will ask a teacher or student from a higher year to help me. Exactly, perfect. I will try my best in subjects. Oh yes, I'm um, fingers crossed. Somebody said, I'll oh, remember residential. Hopefully some of you have been able to go on your residential trips. Or if not, your schools will be doing some really lovely things with you anyway to keep those memories going strong. Super, OK then, so the next part then. Some things that I'm personally suggesting to you. Ask your way around, OK? Find that go to person that can help you with whatever it is. Now that could be me or that could be your form tutor, but find that person that you feel that you can go and ask any questions to. You will be able to meet your form tutor um, virtually before we get to um, September, before the summer holidays. So you will know their face and you will know their name before then, um, but they can be a brilliant go to for you if you need any help at all. Be honest. Tell people how you feel. We don't we won't know you properly yet, so we can't necessarily detect how you're feeling. We need you to tell us and we need you to be honest about how it is you're feeling. Do your research. Have a look around our school website. Learn what there is to learn about staff, about subjects, about all the different things. Do your research. That's a really good way of making people feel happier about something, feeling less worried if you have researched things and you know what it is you need to do. Make sure you have your triangle of trust. Now I'm going to explain this in just a minute, so don't worry. And don't look back. Focus on this, this new part. Focus on us, giving us your all to make sure that you feel happy and ready. OK, focus on us because unfortunately you can't go back to primary school. So you've got to focus on the forward. So the triangle of trust should turn over now. We could put together a triangle like this. You've got you on one side, you've got home, your parents, your guardians on the other side and then a school or teachers on the other bit. OK, write down who is in your triangle of trust. OK, put their names in this triangle in your workbook or on a piece of paper or whatever it is that you're using. OK, write down the different names. You don't know your tutor's name yet, but you can just write tutor. OK, who can you talk to about different things? What things are going to make you feel happy, feel good? Where is your safe place? Where is your safe place when you're at home? If things are getting too much, where is your safe place? I'm going to give you five minutes for the triangle of trust just to write those things down. What, where, where do you feel safe? What do you trust? Who do you trust? OK, the you, the parents, the home, school teachers, they're examples. You don't have to put those down. But writing down different things that you trust so that you feel confident with who and what you've got. Where do you feel safe? What makes you happy? What makes me happy? 
sitting in my garden and reading my book. What also makes me happy? Going to the theatre, going to see different plays and musicals and, and getting that buzz, that excitement of watching performances. Your triangle of trust might be a football team. It might be the friends on that football team. It might be just simply playing football and taking your mind off of everything else. It might be a pet that you've got. A pet, a pet who just calms you down. Super. OK, last thing from me then. I won't disappear for the next five minutes, um, but if you've finished your tri triangle of trust, you are welcome to finish. The biggest thing I want you to do now is get excited. Get excited about coming to secondary school. Get excited about the new people, the teachers, meeting me, meeting everybody that there is to get to know. You're going to meet so many new people and that's the biggest, most exciting part of secondary school. There's going to be more room to swim and more fish to jump around with. You won't be the big fish in the little pond. There'll be a very big pond, but there's loads and loads of people to meet and enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me, even though it's a lovely sunny afternoon. Go get out in the sun, enjoy yourself, and I can't wait to see you in September. I will stay around for the next four or five minutes um, just to answer any questions that you might have. But thank you. See you soon.